see till yesterday we learned what is rpi and everything and today topic is very simple topic and it is a beautiful topic let me start with what is application everybody uh, know we talk rpa will be used for application right am i right or wrong see uh, my intention of this particular uh, course is i want you guys to be more productive and uh, you need to be talk to talk to it is not like that one way communication i am teaching you guys are just listening so if you, whatever you know when i am asking questions you can try to answer if it is wrong probably i will correct it okay will you all agree with this if you say yes just type in chat yes so my name is first class sir is in was so i am unable to answer <laughs> okay just as okay sir thank you so what is application application is nothing but set of rules combined together set of rules combined together uh, to create a software application anybody agree agree this statement Yes. Example, yes. Yes. very best example is calculator application. Yamas word. Yamas Excel. So these are all the application which has been created where it contains certain rules. How can I say that? if i say cal in the calculator you see there is a plus plus is nothing but addition of two number minus is nothing but subtraction of two number multiplication and division so each everything will be a different rules plus will do one particular activity minus will do another activity multiplication will do another activity division will do another activity so all these rules are combined together to create an a software application called calculator make sense so that is why this will be call it as a calculator application like that so many applications are created even icc mobile app hdfc mobile app those are all called as application anybody have any doubt in this question in this one anybody have any doubt Shasha Patan, Lahari, Chandra Mahesh, Balaji. Good. Will you all clear? Now, yes. Types of application. Anybody know what is the type of application? Number one is desktop or stand alone we can say another one is client server another one is mobile application mobile apps so basically the applications are broadly classified into two types in any technology you use dot net you use java you use python you use x y z any technology you use they, they are creating application based on these three types whether they can go and create a desktop application whether they can they can go and create a client server application 
whether they go and create a mobile application. Apart from that, there was no different type of application. Okay. Now, if you look into desktop application, the application will run or access by an individual system. This individual machine as a end user. Right? This application will run on a particular system. Individual machine as an end user. Example, calculator, MS Office. Those applications will work independently on that particular computer. That is the reason called as, they will say, it is a desktop application or stand-alone application. It will independently run. It is not going to rely on any other system. The application will run or access by an individual machine as a for the end user, as an end user, right? So that is called as desktop or standalone application. What is the example you can give? Apart from calculator MS Office, anybody can say that any CRM which will run in a particular independent machine or any Windows-based application or any Windows services. So these applications will run on that particular computer. That is why it is called as desktop or standalone application. Everybody clear? Everybody clear? Anybody have any questions on this? Any doubts? Yes. Okay, fine. No, sir. Now, what is client server application? The application will access by an individual machine, by an individual machine, machine to the end user, but it will execute on, it will execute on another machine another machine to provide result. is called client server application. Anyone can tell me what is the example of this? Anyone can tell me? What is the example? Can you give me a best example okay. for this? Okay, a web application, Yahoo, Gmail. Yeah. Like this. Google.com. Yeah, Google.com. Facebook.com. Somebody says Yahoo.com. Yes, so yes. basically what <laughs> happened... The application will be here and this will be call it as a web server web server right and they do have a machines i have machine one i have machine two i have machine three right like that we have seven people right seven people are accessing what happened these people will try to access this application which are installed in the web server. Got my point? So, for example, the application name is assume you are installed facebook.com here in the web server. fb.com Now you need to access the web Facebook. So, basically, this client, the person client to one, assume this is your client to one. Right? 
So the client one trying to access fb.com so that the request from the client one will go to the web server. Web server in turn connect with the fb.com, process the request, and then immediately return back the response. This is called client server application. Any web application you are developing, your request will be processed in the web server. Got it? Am I right or wrong? Anybody have any questions? Right, sir. No questions. Okay. So here you may see three information. So one is you may see a latency issue because if your internet is not perfect, you will see an issue called latency. Am I right? If your network is not good, sometimes your Chrome will not work. So these are all the issues will happen in Chrome is not working or your browser is not working. So these are all the issues. Sometimes your network issue because you are connecting two different machines. One machine will be available in a web server, which is there in somewhere else. And the other machine is your own machine, which is called a client. So network issue. So when you are accessing any application, these application will have these kind of issues. This is called as web server, client server application. Now you understand who is client and who is server? The person who are accessing the application as an end user, the, the, ex the application which is running in the server. So that is why it is called it as a client server application. Anybody have any questions? Shashta Patan, Lahari, Chandra Mahesh, Anil Srinivas Gaut, Balaji. Oh, yes, sir. We are clear, sir. Okay. Clear. So now, now if you go here, you see application will access by an individual machine to an end user, but it will execute on another machine to provide result is called as client server application. Example, google.com, facebook.com, yahoo.com. Similar way, same thing. Copy this content, mobile. But uh, there is a small change. Anyone can give me the definition of small change? What is the change? Is it an individual machine or individual mobile? Simply individual mobile. Got it? Clear my point? Everybody clear? The application will access by an individual mobile to the end user but it will execute on another machine to provide result is called as client server mobile application. Got my point. So you have a mobile in your hand. You are trying to access google.com. Am I right or wrong? Because the mobile has the internet facility you are trying to access. Similar way you are trying to access facebook.com. Similar way you are trying to access yahoo.com. Now coming back, where you are going to implement that? Anyone can tell me? Now you see this statement. Sequence or step-by-step -step activity performed without human intervention while accessing an application. So now you all understand what is application and why we are using application in RPA. See, in RPA terminology, robotic process terminology, forget about the tool what you are accessing or forget about the tool what you are trying to access. First, you need to understand the basics like what is RPA. RPA is nothing but any activity an uh, end user is performing on that particular process while accessing the application. Instead of human, I am replacing a software robot. Very clear. Everybody clear? What is RPA? Somebody new today? Yes, sir. I'm clear. Okay. So, thanks. So, now that is the thing I want. Somebody new today. The main reason of RPA is RPA stands denotes that instead of human accessing the application, I am placing a software robot 
robot will trying to access the application to process right and robot is reliable or human is reliable which one is reliable human is reliable human reliable are you sure shrinivas uh, human cannot take rest human cannot take leave yeah you, you can yeah, rely yes. on human yes uh, human need rest sir see i will tell you one case i have 100 process 100 ticket to be processed anyone can answer i'm just giving a clue okay i want to process 100 ticket within 4 hours all of a sudden my employees are went for a lunch they never came back due to accident or whatever it may be x y factor okay so will my sla hit or not yes sir so instead of that can i create a software robot which will done for me yes now tell me as part of reliability which is best go with the software robot or go with human software robot go with so rpi is standard standard one which will help me to process my ticket on time yes sir yes balaji So this is the reason we are going for RPA. Now go to my task. Till today, till the start, we completed. Now we are going. Now if you are looking to say, I have application one, I have application two. What is my application? Normal Windows application. I have mainframe application. I have Salesforce application. So all these three application, I'm putting a human which they are working before process can be done manually. Are you got my point? After replacing the software robot, there was no human needed here. I am just going to rely on software robot. Which is best? Can I, I I can go with RPA or I can go with manual? By seeing the picture, which one is best? Come on, you can talk. RPA. You can go with software robot. Software robot. See if you see this, RPA process automation allow using software robot rather than people to drive business process. So where and all we can implement RPA. It is for any organization you can implement RP. Am I right or wrong? Now I'm going to the next slide. Now, this one I can tell you later point of time characteristics. Now, let's talk about the very important point. This is the very important point on today. Which process are suitable for RPA? See, it is not like that. You need to go and implement RPA for everywhere. You need to take a very predominant place where you need to decide that RPA is suitable. See, uh, somebody seniors here, Balaji, uh, Srinivas Gaud, I think uh, Lahari. You guys are very senior senior in the team. See, I want you guys to understand this, this information very important, okay? One is high transaction volume. What does it mean? Anybody can tell me what is high transaction volume? Whatever you know, you can take. What is high transaction volume? What is high transaction volume? Hello? High volume of data, uh, like performance, uh, highly uh, scalable data, such as number of applications. Let's have. Okay. Anything else? Let me give you an example. 
I have one particular ticket, for example, a bank account opening. I have one ticket where human will process in 30 minutes. Right? Per day in ICICI bank, I'm getting 400 tickets. How many employee I need to deploy here? Can you, can you work on this formula? I have one ticket equal to 30 minutes. Now I am deploying 400 tickets. When I deploy 400 tickets, how many employees I need? So what is the actual man hour per day? A one person, a one F person will work for eight hours. Does it make sense? Yes. One person in an organization standard will work for eight hours. That means one person is equal to one FTE. In, in real time, people will call it as one FTE. FTE stands for full-time equivalent or employee. Full-time equivalent or employee. I will tell you all these things so that you can understand very well. See, okay. So now, how many FTEs are required for processing 400 tickets? Let's take a calculator. 400 into 30. 30 minutes, I'm saying, right? So total hours of ticket is, process time is 1,200 minutes. So this 300, 400 tickets should be processed in 1,000, 12,000 minutes. Now, per employee timing is 8 into 60, which is 480. Now, divide this 12,000 into 480. Now, oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. 12,000 Divide by four, 480. So, how many number of employees I need here? 25. 25 FT is needed. Now, as per the industry standard, I am my bot. One bot. Two times speed in two times in speed compared to human. That means it will process, one bot can process in 10 minutes. Assume one bot, one ticket process in 10 minutes. Now tell me same 1200 minutes, how many bots is needed? Let's assume a bot can run in 16 hours. One bot can able to run 16 hours. So how many bots I needed for 400 ticket? Anyone can calculate and tell me? Or tell me what is the calculation? 16 into 61st. So I want to calculate this number, 960, right? Now, 960 means 1,200 divided by 960, which is 12.5 bots. But again, the speed will come down, right? Speed will come down, right? So it is not 1,200 minutes. You have to less it. 4,400 into... 10 minutes, which is 4,000 minutes. Actual bot transaction time is 4,000 minutes, whereas human transaction time is 12,000 minutes. Am I right? Everybody clear? Everybody clear? Yes, sir. If you are not clear, let me know. Hello? Will I make yes, you sir, confused? Clear, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear, 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 clear. sir. 
Yeah. Okay, so now 400 tickets is equal to 400 into 10 minutes. So how many minutes I can process? Within 4,000 minutes, I can process the entire tickets. Whereas human can process in 12,000 minutes. Whereas the here, 4,000 minutes. Which one is best? Which, which one is best? Going with bot is best. Going with human is best. Bot is best, sir. So now, 4,000 divided by 960. which is called four bots or five bots maximum. So how many employees I reduced by using five bots with the same 20. transaction? 20. 20. 20. Okay. So high transaction value can be processed by bot or not? With an example, what I provided. It is a best case for Automating a RPA. Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. Balaji? I left. Srinivas Gaud? Yes, sir. Anil? Yes. You all clear? Tahari? Fine. Now you understand what is high transaction volume? Anything more volume implementing RPA is a right solution. Anything more volume implementing RPA is a right solution. Are you got my point? Now coming to the next point. What is my next point? Highly manual and repetitive. What does it mean? Anything you are doing manually, that is called highly manual and repetitive. Are you got my point? See, for example, I'm accessing Windows application, web application, and yesterday I given an example. I am accessing Windows application, web application, and the desktop application. Are you got my point? In that particular point of time, uh, the human can doing the same job repetitively. That means highly manual and repetitive. The third one is rule-based. What is rule-based? Anything you are processing as a rule-based rules or define a rule based on the condition you need to access on different application, that is called rule-based. Srinivas, you got my point? Anil, you got my point? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So yes, the sir. next one is low exception rate. Implementing RPA where you doesn't get any exceptions, that particular point of time, you can go for low exception rate. The fifth one is structured data. Always the data you are getting should be from an application by Excel or by any source. Your input source always comes from a structured format. If it is an unstructured format, Please, please, please stop the process from there. Say to the business that I can't able to automate this. Clear? Because unstructured data will provide you RPA failure. Your data is more, more, more important. And third one, sixth point is stable process. For example, uh, in any revenue revenue process, sometimes what happens, they will keep on changing the rule in the application. They will keep on changing the rule in the process. If you are not getting the rule change on a frequent basis, you have to go and re record your RPA. Am I right or wrong? Let's take an example. Uh, how many are few worked on Salesforce? Salesforce application. Real-time Salesforce application, anyone can access? If not, I will tell you. Salesforce will give every six months, or every three months, every quarter, they will change the UI. If you implement RPA on a Salesforce application, every quarter, you need to go and change your RPA process. 
even though it is an i volume transaction you need to go and change your application why because the ui will change if the ui change your rpa robot selector will get affected once it get affected you need to go and change your rpa process got my point so like that you need to think a process which is stable for at least 6 months you should not go for every 3 months or 1 month you need to keep on changing your process again it will be a production support issue got my point everybody clear is it confused no oh, sir okay so now you all understand on which process are suitable for rpa the number one is highly transaction volume number two is highly manual and repetitive task you have to go for rpa third one is rule based process a process which has a rules the process doesn't have a rule please don't go for those kind of process fourth one is low exception rate fifth one is structured data sixth one is a process should be stable for at least 6 months then only you can go ahead and take up as process for suitable case for rp i'm stopping from here because i don't want to uh, go very fast for next 4 5 days then we can go ahead with the very fast manner okay anybody have any questions can i stop the recording